Hi, my name is Paul Stevens. I'm from Advantex Networks and Communications Group, and I've traveled over here to this special place in Germany, all the way from France. It's in the southeastern corner. It's a town called Amberg. Now, don't confuse that with Hamburg, like most of us do, but here we have a secret R&D center. And here, right in the heart of the Bavarian rainforest, lives a guy called Peter Marek. Locally, by the indigenous tribes, he's known as the Marek Monster. And he's here in this little R&D center with a bunch of guys called engineers. And you know what those engineers do all day? They spend all day designing cool new technology based on the latest and greatest silicon. Now, if we get a chance to meet Peter and take us around some of the secret products that he's been working on that I think many of them have been released, we might get some great insight in some of the new technology here. So let's see if Peter's around. We usually can hear him because he's got his knee bone connected to his backbone and his blade bone connected to his whatever PCI Express bone. And so, oh yeah, hey Peter, you're over there. Hey, good to hey, see you. Hey, Paul. Oh, good yeah, to see great. you. How are you doing? Oh, doing pretty good, thanks. Down here in the Amberg uh, Bavarian rainforest. Huh? Yeah. So, what do you got cooking? Well, I thought you were coming to sniff out some new product stuff. Oh. And the Bushrams told us so. We prepared pre, <laughs> uh, pre bright oh, range I of new see. products. Oh, I can see. Look at that. Wow. So what do you got? The ATCA blades there, yeah? Well, we've got ATCA and I think, well, let's start off with uh, looking at some new stuff for our flagship oh, products. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, yeah. So what's that one here? That's our uh, next generation Intel Xeon blade uh, based on the E5 series Xeons, just released from Intel and we just also launched this blade. And it has got two Xeon CPUs that you can see eight DIMMs. Mm -hmm. So that can support up to five, uh, 256 gigabytes of memory. 256 gig, wow. Which is pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. For Has a 10 gig backplane interface, and well, we um, integrate some uh, more exciting stuff. But I want to see if you can find out. Oh, right. Um, well, if I look at it, one of the things that stands out immediately is like, what's this high density connector there? Well, this is where the small modules go here that we have over here. We call them FMM fabric mesomy modules, and you can see it. They they come with a faceplate. Mm -hmm. They have an EMC gasket here. You see the high density connector. And what it allows you to do, for instance, is look at this one. It allows you to have some front IO ports. Like this one is a dual 10 gig mm -hmm. SFP plus module. Wow, look at that. It's so much smaller than like an AMC module, right? Before everybody had to put AMC modules, didn't they? Yeah, well, we can compare the size against an AMC module. Uh -huh. And if you look at that, this is the size of an AMC. And you will see. The FMM is about the same width, <laughs> wow. but it's one third the depth. Yeah. So that brings us some really big advantages here, which means, well, it's not just one, one third the board size, it is blocking far, uh, far less airflow. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you put an AMC down here, yeah. mm -hmm. right? how much airflow that would block coming into the blade. Mm -hmm. Never so, get to the Xeons, or I guess they're not going to be cooled very well at all. Huh? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we, we're supporting 95 watt Xeons, so pretty, pretty high uh, TDP processors yeah, yeah. here. So that really makes a difference in the thermal design of the blade. And moreover, the AMC slot costs just like $50 on the bump cost, just to integrate mm -hmm. that. Wow. So, hey, Peter, so what's that over there? That's an RTM, right? Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, yeah, that, that's a rear transition module, uh -huh. right? Uh, and as you see, it directly plugs into that front blade. Uh -huh, right. So it mates uh -huh. over these connectors over here. Uh -huh. And it gives customers a possibility to have additional I.O. on uh -huh. the rear of the system. So what this SKU gives you is ability to have two hard disk drives, uh -huh. swappable. You can add external SAS devices here, over okay. two connectors, uh -huh. and you have a bunch of LAN port and a console port. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, the, so the, the overhang on this, that's not a problem for people uh, in the industry, that they, they don't mind that overhang? Is that you mean the, the uh, cages here sticking yeah. out on the back? Yeah. No, actually not, because in uh, all the ATCA spec and everything, 
it has provisioning for rear cable management. Mm -hmm. So in the rack, there is a uh, reserved space for the cable management, and that's the space we're using here. Oh, okay. Because okay. wherever you have a hard drive, you won't have cables, right? Right, right. So um, we're really within uh, the tolerance, and it gives you two drives, so you can have a RAID system, especially if we run, use a blade for control plane purposes. Wow, that's okay. Cool. So you've got quite a lot packed on there. So what comes off here to the high density? Is that like PCI by what? By 16 or? Well, there's a bunch of PCI Express ports. It's a B mm -hmm. PCIe by 16 here, mm -hmm. SATA, SAS, USB ports, uh, COM ports, some IOs for housekeeping. So this RTM is hot swappable, for instance, so it has its own management control and things like that. Wow, that's pretty cool. So this interface is, is the RTM is also way to do customization at a system level is plug a different RTM, you can have different IOs on the rear. Mm -hmm. So we come up with a best guess standard product, but in a lot of cases we do design custom RTMs for our customers to address their specific needs without having to customize the front plate. Right, so they would have like some of their secret source perhaps on a, on a specially designed rear transition module that you'd help them design. Basically you're right, we have even enabled customers to design custom RTMs in-house mm -hmm. to do their second source integration and we just help them with the RTM and ATCA specific aspects of the design but for the rest we didn't interfere and, and didn't touch their IP, we kept their secrets all secret. Oh, that's really good. That's good. So that's something that can entice people if they got perhaps some of their proprietary technology to move to ATCA because you can facilitate that, that whole thing. Wow. So, so what else have you got here? And there's a lot of interesting looking modules well, and things. Well, we basically touch base on the FMMs, but uh -huh. there's not a single Gigi IO FMM. Uh -huh. This one, for instance, is a quick assist hardware acceleration chip uh -huh. that can plug on. So this is something you don't need the IO. You can use that slot for something different. Wow. It is for offloading the CPUs. Mm -hmm. So to pump up the overall throughput on that blade. Wow, that's really cool. So you've got, you've got other things on there that don't need necessarily front I.O. So you've yeah. got front I.O., non-front I.O., accelerators and... So Peter, let's, let's uh, move this way a little bit. I can see this blade, this ATCA blade here, has got three of those FMM sights on it. So, so tell me, what's, what's that blade? Well, this is actually a 40 gig version on that blade, you see the similarities like the CPUs, well we don't have the heat sinks on here, we have the same number of dim slots, and yes, you're right, we can put three FMMs there. <laughs> so that gives us an awful lot of flexibility. So guess what this thing is? This tiny thing here. Looks like a NIC or something like that, yeah, an Ethernet you're controller. You're right. Yeah. So that is a dual port 40 gig NIC. Wow. So you put here one of those, uh -huh. you put it down here. Right. You have two 40 gig ports, that's 80 gig to the back plane. Mm -hmm. You can put two of those, you have 160 gig to the back plane. 160 gig to the back plane? Wow. On four ports. Oh. So we're supporting the dual dual star, also on a 40 gig version. Right. So you do a dual star, that means like you've got uh, uh, four switch blades uh, in, the four in the system? Four switch blades in the system, mm -hmm. and we have customers that want to start off with 10 gig. Mm -hmm. So you can even use the blade for migration. Just put a 10 gig here and a 10 gig here. You have four 10 gig E to the back plane. Mm -hmm. You want to scale up to a 40 gig system, replace the 10 gig modules with 40 gig modules. So what's that? That's like, there are four of those on there. So what's that, a double FMM or something like that? That's a double size FMM. You, you see that? Uh -huh, yeah. You have two of those connectors. Uh -huh. And it plugs on onto these. And what we have done here is we put four Niantics there. Uh -huh. So it's, it's totally eight 10 gig e ports. Wow. And this gives us more flexibility in the way we route those 10 gig e ports to the back plane. Mm -hmm. Right? Instead of having one 40 gig port, we have four 10 gig E lanes. And it allows us to reroute traffic to different CPU sockets in a more favorable way. So it is especially useful for people doing DPI because those guys want to have the flows from one user end up at the same socket, it's the same thread all the time. Mm -hmm. No matter which IO port or hub blade it comes in. 
And with the flexibility we have, because this is four single 10 gig e ports instead mm -hmm. of one 40 gig port is, we can wire up those ports differently and that way immediately direct the traffic to the right socket, to the right core that runs the right thread for that flow. Wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that sounds like things that NPUs used to do, right, in systems before, Exactly, right? mm -hmm. exactly. We're there with mm -hmm. Sanderbridge technology and some smart concepts like we're doing. We're absolutely peer in terms of performance with NPU blades. Mm, wow. Just it takes you a fraction of the time to develop and port your software. Wow. That's, that's really, you guys have really gone to town on this one. That's and we have a customer that uses this blade in three different configurations mm -hmm. in one system. So the very traditional use case is use the IA for a control plane. Right. Second use is for application processing. And the third use case, especially with a lot of the offloading acceleration FMMs, is a packet processing monster. <laughs> wow. So all they have in that system is a bunch of switch blades and Intel blades in different configurations. Wow. They don't need an extra special purpose MPU blade or something like that. Wow. So those were the blades, Peter. And if I, I mean, let's move over to these little systems here. If I'm not mistaken, that's a box that we did some promotion on called Deep Packet One, right? Exactly, you're right. That is a dual Xeon machine in a 2U form factor. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's pretty modular on the I.O. side. It has four slots here mm -hmm. for I.O. modules where you can plug our random C modules in. Oh, right. So they're like network mezzanine cards, yeah? That's what we call them, network mezzanine cards. Uh -huh. If you compare it to an AMC, it's about the same size, right? Yeah. You see same. that? It's yeah. the same size as an NMC. But you see, this has got front vent holes, and this has different kind of airflow direction. Right which leads to some problems because it's airflow coupling. We have an air duct here. We have a handle mechanism, which is more robust. Mm -hmm. And these are front installable modules. Right. So you open the handle, plug it out. That's it. That's pretty straightforward. That you can customize your rail. Mm -hmm. So you got what? What do you got here, for example? These are uh, SFP pluses for 10 gig E ports or what? Yeah, you're right. This is dual 10 gig E. Uh -huh. this, is a, this is a quad copper. Mm -hmm. This is a quad fiber uh, gigi module. And what you see here is that actually one module occupies the same space of two of these hard disk trays, mm -hmm. which gives us a lot of flexibility in customizing the front area to have more storage I.O. or more networking I.O. Or more I. networking I.O. Right. And with the additional ports, we're getting on the Sandy Bridge CPUs. We even have a SKU that just has eight of these NMC modules at the front. Wow. So you have like PCI Express straight into the module or yes, is it's that a it? PCIe yeah. bait. Yeah. So what we have is we have an eight port gig E module that gives you 64 gig E ports. Wow. <laughs> and with 10 gig E ports, it's eight times two is 60 now. Wow. But guess what? What? We'll double it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have a quad 10 gig E module. Oh, quad 10 gig E's. That's 16, 32, 10 gig E ports? Yes, exactly. You're right. In a two year box. Oh, gee, why is that? that? Is incredibly awesome. So that gives you all of that flexibility. So, from a storage perspective, what you've got a two and a half inch uh, removable drive? It's two drives and a half here. inch hard disk drives. It can be SSDs, whatever mm -hmm. customers prefer to have. Mm hmm. One thing I would like to mention about this concept is that we have taken it to another level that we can install those modules now even on the smaller mid-range platforms. Right, that's the single Xeon uh, E3-2700 family platform, right? The FWA3210? That's the FWA3210. Mm -hmm. We just upgraded it to the Ivory Bridge generation E3 Xeons. Wow. And we have two sockets mm -hmm. here, you see? Oh, yeah. So you can use them across uh, both platforms and scale from yeah. single processor, four 10 gig E's and maybe even eight in the future, up to this guy, which is actually quite a, a packet processing monster, really. Yeah, the, the whole concept scales across a product family as customer scale, mm -hmm. the product range. It's more efficiency, spare parts, logistics, whatever. Mm -hmm. And some of our customers even use that concept for upselling. So they sell the base box, Later on, as the end customers' networks grow, they sell those customers another module. Just upgrade. And it's so yeah. easy to insert it 
right? You insert it and get a new license key. Wow, that's and cool. And you have a lot of upselling and revenue. So, Peter, what's this? What's under there? Are we, hey, allow hey, are we allowed hey, to look at it? No, 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 no. Keep it on. Why not? We won't show you. Why? No, this oh, is come on, I'm with the same secret company. sauce stuff that's oh. not released, that's early stage. <laughs> oh, but come I can on. tell you, oh. the next stuff will just be as great as what have, we have shown you today. Oh, so I can see that when the camera stops, right? So you can give me a little Maybe, peek. maybe. Oh, I'll, I'll buy you a beer in the local yeah. beer garden. We oh, can talk about cool. that. Yeah, yeah. But officially we can't do that. <laughs> oh, you officially? Oh, I'm sure. Hey, we should go there, go down to the beer garden and toast uh, some of these guys and put some of this great technology together. I think it is absolutely incredible. You guys have got some absolutely award-winning stuff, if you want my opinion. I think the sales guys are going to love to get their hands on it, and the customers are going to love it. It's brilliant. Well, it's all about the customers, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. That is so good. Well, I'm, I'm going to invite you out to dinner, Peter. Yeah. Okay, okay. how about that? Hey, hey thanks for coming by. That's really My great. pleasure, as always. Okay, thanks.